What's going on, Clutch? What? What up, what up, what up? It's your boy, Dup. It's your boy, Ross. We're in the Clutch. Hey. hey. Back to you, ladies and gentlemen, of the visitor that you feel me. All right. The most hated versus the most loved NFL players. Now, there are some players in the league that people, you know, generally have the consensus of, oh, you know, they're mm -hmm. great in the community. The people love them. Mm -hmm. You know, even people on the field, you know. And then there's some Thanks. people... They don't have the best reputation. A lot of people may not like them, and especially the people on the field may not like them. So, and as crazy as most commonly, mm -hmm. the ones that you think the media puts out there to portray as the worst ones be the best ones. Yeah, and the most loved ones usually be the one that's shiesty and shady. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's, that's crazy. How, that's how it be. So we're gonna check out some of these instances. Appreciate our love support. Let's get right into For it. For every man. NFL player that is loved, there are an equal amount that are despised, oh, and none are yeah. more notorious than Vontez Perfect. Ranked as the number one oh, dirtiest player in NFL history, and for good reason. Ooh. Perfect has lost over $5.3 million since entering the league in 2012 from various oh. fines and suspensions. His most infamous was the cheap shot that he landed on Antonio uh -huh, Brown bro. during the 2016 playoffs. Perfect yep. would be suspended three games for the 2016 season and fined $112,000 for his actions, which began a string of other suspensions. Uh -huh. In 2017, Perfect would again be suspended for a hit he made in week two of the preseason. Oh. He was again suspended four games in 2018, not but for his on-the-field play, but for violating the NFL's PED policy. The final straw for the NFL came in 2019 when he perfectly delivered yet another unnecessary helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit on Colts tight end Jack Doyle. Perfect would be ejected from the game as well as being suspended for the rest of the 2019 season. Karma did catch up to him during the 2017 Ooh. season in the form of Juju Smith-Schuster with this that, nasty peelback block. Juju was suspended. I remember, I remember that because it's just one of those type of things where it's like you keep doing this Fine, that's okay. You we got you because that's how they. That's you know you've heard it from Shannon. You know what I'm saying when he's talking about his past experiences when they're like, oh him, don't worry, we got him. Yeah, yeah. they'll purposely run a route over there that has nothing to do, nowhere near the ball, and they gonna Damn, pop you your up, ass, bro. pop you, boom. And one, it's one of those things where you understood because, because you he, get tired of that, bro. Yeah, Man, you get tired of like the ongoing. You know, person is blatantly. This, yeah. this is a dangerous sport. Yeah. So when you see somebody is going up without having no attention of catching the ball, or just somebody going for a block, and you side, you know, side yeah. swiping, you know, it's just yeah, yeah, bro. I remember that, that's, and that's dirty. No remorse. I'm like, that's what his ass get because he been doing that shit for a minute, and that's what his ass get popped him. Cool. That's one of those things. You know what? I know I'm going to get suspended. I know I'm going to oh, get yeah, fined. That but fine. that's fine because we don't do that shit over here. We stopping all that. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and pay that little fee. Yep. That's cool. Bended for a game for the hit, but some may look at it as justice for the countless yeah, cheap shots boy. Perfect yeah. landed in that's his career. the best career. photograph, too. Well, Perfect is known for his dirty play, J.J. Watt is known for his generosity. Of course. Andre Johnson saying this when asked to describe him, amazing. Everything he has accomplished on the field, everything he has accomplished off the field, Everything he has done for the He's city of, of Houston greatest, is truly amazing. Texas of all time. It may be cliche to say, as phenomenal of a football player he is, he's an even better person. This oh, yeah, perfectly up. sums up the three time NFL Defensive Player of the Year, who also received the Walter Payton Man of the Year mm -hmm. award in 2017. Watt earned this when he raised over $40 million in relief funds after the city of Houston was mm -hmm. decimated by yep. Hurricane Harvey. Yep. In addition, he has conducted a number of make a wish moments as well as the contributions from his foundation has raised over $7 million for funding after-school programs across the country. As if that wasn't enough, it really takes a special player to have quarterbacks you terrorized honor you in a tribute when you announce your retirement. I yeah. can't say that I'm not excited that I don't have to go against you anymore, uh, but you're an incredible player. Excited to see the next chapter of your life. You were not only a dominant player on the field, but you did so much for people off the field. Yeah, nah, JJ's him, bro. Buddy. He's him. He's goaded. Players yeah, are obviously sure. sad to see J.J. Watt retire, but the same cannot be said for Bill Romanowski. Romanowski, or oh, Romo yo. as many called him, played in the NFL from 1988 to 2003 and won four Super Bowls in the process with the San Francisco 49ers and the 49ers. Denver Broncos. Yet most people remember him not for these achievements, but for the kind of player he was during Gee. his career. Yeah. Romo well, was known down. for his hard-nosed defense and physical brand of football. Ooh. From Ooh. cheap shots to fights, even going as far as spitting in another player's face on the field. Oh, no. In 1997, he... Yeah. 
It's yeah, up. Go on, coach. I just want you to know. Um, Whatever the fine is, go ahead and write it off. Go ahead and write it name, off, bro, because I'm, I'm, like I'm taking this helmet off and I'm beating his ass. It's and then down. after you separate us, I'm going to find him in this building oh, yeah. and I'm beating his ass, bro. Y'all going to have to physically remove us from the stadium. That was straight in his face. That wasn't nah, like no bro. spit to the ground. Nah, like, ugh, I'm it taking was not. That was. Um, he did a little eye contact with it. I'm beating your ass, bro. Yeah, it's, it's up. It's up, bro. It's up, bro. He even broke Panthers quarterback <laughs> Kerry Collins' jaw in a preseason game with a helmet-to-helmet tackle. This wasn't the only time he broke something on the football field. I'm pissed, and I'm down there just trying to rip that ball out of his hands. And all I could get was a finger. A CTE. Yeah. Predisposed. Yeah. You see it in his eyes. Yeah. I'm pissed. Yeah, he's, he's different, man. So mad for it, bro. And at that time, I thought it was his, but thought just he was whatever Boucher. it was, just, See? I just snapped it. See it. And I could hear a scream at the bottom of the pile. You broke his finger and you thought to yourself, good, he's not going to be so effective anymore. At that time, yes. Well, he might That's seem like a guy the... who you'd hate to play against, but you'd love it. on your team. Not even that can be said about him. As in 2003, he broke his own teammate's eye socket during a training camp brawl. Marcus Williams' career was ended due to the injury, yeah, and he later this. sued Romo for his salary and the expenses. Romo would end up paying him out $340,000 for his salary and medical expenses, as well as an additional $75,000 to just end the legal battle. Pat Tillman was another player known for his big defensive hits, mm -hmm. but he never seemed to cross a line like Romanowski. Yep. Drafted in 1997 during the seventh round, Tillman earned his spot on the Cardinals roster with his physical play. A mm -hmm. former teammate described that Tillman started making plays in games, helping us win football games, and it became infectious. He quickly became a fan infectious. favorite and in 1998, helped Arizona win its first playoff game in over 50 years. Tillman chose to turn down a three-point win they his beat? first. Who they beat? <laughs> To make sure he's yeah, stupid, sorry, bro. playoff game in over 50 years. Tillman chose to turn down a $3.6 million contract to enlist in the U.S. Uh -huh. Army after the attacks on September 11th. That's Practically, crazy, bro. he was killed by friendly fire on April 22nd of 2004. Though his NFL career was short, he touched That's so crazy. many people as Jake Plummer recounts. Friend. I mean, he really was. A, you say you have friends. And you friendly guys know fire, who your, your friends are, really, when times matter. And Pat was like that so many people. He really had an, a real mm -hmm. special yeah. way of, of connecting Turned with down millions. anybody. I mean, you go on ASU's campus, you could find 10, 15 people that would be obscure on the back walls, janitors, whatever you say, just in the in the shadows that, that probably knew Pat at a deep level because he just was intrigued with humans. And when he would sit down with you, he was genuine and authentic. Someone who many may not call a friend was Richie Incognito. Incognito was an incredible offensive lineman in both college and the NFL. However, he was unable to avoid controversy. Dating back to his college years, he was ejected in 2002 for fighting on the field, suspended in 2003 for a fight he was involved in during practice, and in 2004, Incognito was involved in a fight at Nebraska and charged with a misdemeanor well, like assault. God, damn. Nebraska had such high expectations of Incognito being one of the best offensive linemen in the country, but ended up suspending him indefinitely in 2004 for repeated violations of team rules. His real controversy would come while he was with the Miami Dolphins during the 2013 season when he began harassing teammate Jonathan Martin. It was discovered that Incognito had bullied Martin, even going as far as making racial comments and death threats. After an investigation, he was suspended from the team and the Dolphins did not resign him after. Oh, Tony would eventually bro. clean up his act afterwards and one of his teammates even saying he became a locker room favorite. Incognito continued to be involved in other incidents off the football field that were possibly a result of mental health problems. Oh. Blake Bortles, however, was right. someone who avoided controversy Bortles. for his career. Yeah. Bortles was the third overall pick in the 2013 NFL Draft and was widely known for his relaxed and down-to-earth personality. One of his former teammates, Jared Goff, said he's an all-timer and a guy he certainly misses. His laid-back attitude extended to when he did this with the construction crew that was working on his house. We brought a football out one day and we just had a catch and it just like stopped work. Everybody stopped what they were doing. Next thing, it felt like you were at just gym class in sixth grade and we're just playing a 15 way of catch. Although this That's might have funny. been a dream for him as he said this during an interview in 2015. What would you do if you weren't playing football? If I wasn't playing football, um, 
work in construction, ripping six. Which ironically is my plan if this YouTube channel does not work out. Please subscribe. I'm not strong enough for construction. <laughs> well, not known so for his dirty enough. play, Terrell Owens was disliked by opposing oh, players and even was, his own teammates. Boy. Owens was known for his outlandish yep. and over-the-top yep. touchdown yep. celebrations yep. that might have even gone too far not sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> his coach, you, Steve Mariucci, was so angry with him that he suspended uh, him for a while because of this celebration. <laughs> Outside of touchdown celebrations, T.O. threw his own teammates under the bus when uh -huh. his teams were not winning. While he was with the Eagles, he feuded with quarterback Donovan yeah. McNabb when he felt slighted after his own injury. He burned bridges everywhere he went. His reputation was so bad that three separate teams chose to get rid of him when he was still playing at a high mm -hmm. level. Despite all this, T.O. still says, I felt like I was a true team player despite the perception. I'll let you guys be the judge on that. That's, However, no one could ever call that. Hall of Famer Joe Thomas a bad team. Teammate. Thomas was drafted in 2007 by the Cleveland Browns and played every snap for the team until his final season. Damn. His NFL record of 10,363 oh. consecutive offensive That's plays crazy, occurred bro. over a time period in which his team won 48 games to their 128 oh, losses and damn. never made a playoff appearance. Wow. It's widely known that the... That's kind of tough. That nigga played every, every snap. Offensive snap. And only won 48 games. That's when you know you love the game. Yeah, bro. the sport you, itself. You love the game even when you out there, you know your team is not doing good, but you still out there giving it your best. That's that's different. You don't see too much of that, bro. Because I couldn't do it. <laughs> Trade me, nigga. Hell yeah, I'm out of here, bro. God, I'm 10,000 snaps, bro. We only won 48 games. Hell no. I'm, I'm gone, fam. That's crazy, bro. That's dedication right there. For sure. For gotta sure. love it. <clears throat> Cleveland Browns struggled throughout his career, only ever being in playoff contention during Thomas's rookie season. Wow. This legendary offensive lineman was often the single standout for these miserable years in Cleveland history, allowing only 30 sacks from 2007 to 2017. While he could have easily moved on from the struggling yeah, team and provided value anywhere he went, Thomas stuck out his entire 11 year career That's with awesome. the team. Fans were definitely sad to hear about Thomas's retirement, but fans actually booed Andrew Luck when he retired. Yeah, uh -huh. they did. Poor, poor fans. The major difference was. This is the only thing I don't like about this. It's just like the same thing that happened with Deshaun. With John, like, yep. You should never boo a man when he's after. down, bro. When he's down or going through anything, especially injury wise, like yeah, bro. that's a person's livelihood. They put their life on the line for our entertainment. Whatever he doing outside of football and all that, that's whatever. Hearsay. I mean, that's that's for outside. But when it comes to the game, you should never boo a person for being yeah. injured or trying to, you know, obtain or sustain from being injured and to kind of just be mindful that hey, this injury that I suffered could be life threatening. Yeah. I got a family. Mm-hmm. Yep, I mean that's it's the fickleness of fans, right? It's happened with the Texans when I remember when Matt Schaub got mm -hmm. hurt. I remember watching that game and people were cheering, yeah, or whatnot. Um, and I didn't like Matt Schaub like that all the way, but I didn't you know, even cheer when he, when got, he got hurt. hurt. Like that's, that's you know what I'm saying. Sick. Like despite the play, you know, despite you know the mistakes. I mean, they're human; they're not perfect. Yeah. But I'm not. I would never condone people being happy. About you know someone getting hurt, unless you're one of them dirty players, yeah. you purposely then you get popped. That's karma. At that That's point. karma at that point. But I never in no situation like yeah. that. You hate to see that man, and I remember this uh, very vividly. Or, it was just like, man, come on, bro, what y'all doing? Or or if you know we're going against each other on fantasy, and your dude <laughs> just be. I, even then, I'm not gonna be like I'm like no, I'm, I'm like kidding. I'm like damn, oh, bro. Well, you come Ross. I'm, I'm gonna be like, damn, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, damn. I'm gonna be honest with you. I am being honest. Like, damn. Bro, for, we all for example, say, damn. Godwin, he got the, injured. Yeah. And uh, shout out to the homie Steve. Happy birthday to you, bro. Hey, happy uh, I was birthday. playing him in fantasy, and he ended up on the last play, he ended up getting enough yards to win. But when you saw what happened, I was like, ah. I was like, damn, bro. That's how you did it. Yeah. Even though I, I lost because of the last catch he co uh, caught, That's but it was still. He reenacted it. It was just like, damn, because when you've seen the injury, yeah, I, nah, I, sure. I mean, he's pretty Prayers much done. Not. But all jokes aside, we pray for all these people that put yeah. their, they're putting their body on the line for our entertainment. Yeah. So, booing somebody 
nonetheless, mm-hmm. or, or being happy or celebrating when they get hurt. No, nah, we don't do that. That's, bro. that's evil minded, evil weird shit. spirited, and you better be careful with that type of mm-hmm. stuff because it can come back on you. Mm-hmm. Luck's retirement was actually announced mid preseason game from a tweet. Luck yeah. had suffered several injuries during yeah, his bro. career and spent all of 2017 rehabbing. Colts fans were hopeful time. that Peyton Manning's successor would lead them to another Super Bowl, but he had other plans. The retirement press conference was extremely emotional for Luck, and I'm sure fans were sad to see him go as well. Yeah, but even sure. analysts expressed that they felt Luck had gone about this in the wrong way. I can't believe that I'm saying this. The fans were not wrong. You told Peter King, I, I expect to be ready for week one. The, not agree. the timing of it, the overall sense of disappointment. Colts fans had a real, legit reason to believe they were going to contend for a Super Bowl this year. George Kittle, on the other hand, is not only a fan this favorite, but a favorite amongst of his teammates in the mm-hmm. locker room. Good energy. Known for his unbelievable abilities on the football field and golden retriever-like personality, it's not a shocker that he's always truly loved. the cameras. Yeah, I got it that time. Good job. Even the guys that he blocks seem to enjoy mixing it up with Kittle. This man just seems yeah, to bring joy Kittle, to man. everybody yeah. he comes in contact with. Off the field, he is just as likable. He bought over 150 tickets for National Guard members to attend a game That's and was tough, nominated man. for the NFL's Salute to Service Award in 2004. But possibly the polar opposite of Kittle is oh. Ndamukong Sue. Oof. Sue has been fined oh, over $200,000 in his NFL <laughs> career for his dirty he plays play and that, unnecessary bro. roughness. Yeah, bro. Some of his most egregious offenses have come at the expense of various Packers uh-huh. players. In 2011, Sue was suspended for stomping on Evan Dietrich Smith on mm-hmm. Thanksgiving Day. Yep, As Sue was getting that. up from the ground, he turned back and yep. stomped on the offensive yeah. lineman. Then in 2014, he appeared man. to intentionally step on Aaron Rodgers' legs after the play was over. It's pretty evident why Sue is not well liked amongst players in the league, especially when you consider this low block he made against the Vikings in 2013. Yet I think you'd have a hard time finding anyone that hates Ryan Fitzpatrick. Before becoming an analyst for Thursday Night Football, Fitzmagic was an NFL journeyman, playing on nine different teams in his 17 year career. He delivered some incredible moments both on and off the field, like when he threw a pass with his helmet completely sideways, or when he wore Deshaun Jackson's clothes at a press conference. <laughs> well, I, it's nothing. I mean, I think we just have to stay humble. You know, <laughs> we got to make sure we know how to handle success and all those things. Uh, so we can't change who we are. His most favorite of his team seemed to be the Buffalo Bills. As in 2022, Fitzpatrick returned for the home playoff game and he was spotted shirtless with the rest of the fans. <laughs> Even repeating this after the Bills won on Thursday yeah, Night I'm Football really in 2023. Yeah, huh? While it's safe to say Fitzmagic is widely beloved, the same cannot be said for quarterback oh, Tom Brady. Fans we know why. Yeah, I didn't. We know why we hated this son of a bitch. There's more than that. I, there was a reason why I hate this nigga, bro. Yeah, that too. We couldn't beat these niggas at home. Couldn't stand this nigga, bro. Couldn't we only him. recently did that shit. <laughs> couldn't stand him, man. God it's damn just, it! It's just he didn't. He wasn't likable with the Patriots. He wasn't at all. I'll be the first one to say I couldn't stand the Patriots. Ooh. Couldn't stand Tom. I, I loved oh. Peyton Manning growing up. So that, to me, that was my number one. Um, and people always compared them and all that. I'm like, man, you know, Tom is really over it. Like, a, this is me back then. A lot of them Super Bowls was the kicker or the uh, the other team just giving the game away. <laughs> That's how I felt back in the day. Still kind of a little bit down, but when he went with the Bucks, bro, it was it was yeah. like, all right, bro. He, yeah, he just became more likable. Like we got to see and interact with him more. Yeah, Belichick's trying to do that, but I still got a little. Mm, you trying too hard now, <laughs> but yeah, it's we, we had our reasons. Oh, yeah, we man. had our reasons, man. Hatred for Brady due partially to his continued success in the NFL yeah, from 2001 to 2022. Brady won seven Super Bowls and most likely crushed the dreams of several fan bases looking for their own championship. However, the real hatred began with these controversies Cheaters surrounding the here. team he was on. In 2007, it was yeah. discovered that mm-hmm. the Patriots were illegally filming opponents' team signals during games. Mm-hmm. An investigation into what was dubbed Spygate would reveal the practice had occurred since the 2000 season. This helped develop a That's hatred crazy. for Brady and the Patriots that really made fans believe their three Super Bowls were illegitimate. 
Again, Brady would be involved in another scandal called Deflategate, Deflategate where the NFL yep. suspected he had ordered someone to tamper with NFL game balls. There seemed to be enough evidence to issue Brady with a four-game suspension, and that was enough for fans to believe he was guilty. But as for Walter Payton, it's mm. easy to understand why he's beloved by NFL fans Walter and Payton, players. Bro. Payton mm -hmm. was not only a Hall of Fame football player, but also one of the biggest humanitarians of his generation. He OG. founded the Walter yeah. Payton Foundation in 1988, which focused on supporting children's education and healthcare, as tell. well as the well-being of children and families awesome. in need. It was discovered that in 1999, he had a rare liver disease and quickly became an advocate for organ transplants, despite mm. already being too far gone for this to be an option for him. He would end up passing away from complications of his illness on November 1st, 1999, but his legacy was already cemented. In yep. 1977, he won the Man of the Year Award, which honored a player's philanthropy and community impact. This award was renamed in 1999 as the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award yep. in order to honor him and what he had done. Hey man, man. this was a this was a definitely a dope one. I yeah, see they have sure. a part two, so we may have to check that one out. Yeah, man. Um, but yeah, this was definitely a good one just to see the contrast between you know people that you know liked certain players and the ones that are definitely hated for either mm -hmm. just always winning or dirty dirty plays and stuff like that that they get involved in so yeah man there's always something man again people are always going to view you some kind of way mm -hmm. and you know what i always feel for these uh these athletes because when you play in the game you got people that's analyzing every little mm -hmm. they're, they're critiquing every little piece of your game mm -hmm. and sometimes you're just tired of hearing sometimes you just have bad days and yeah. bad games it's, it's you're human yeah but for somebody to get up the next morning and just be ripping you to shreds and you on every I can tell that's just mentally can be, you know, bothersome. And you sure. all, that can also add to the, you know, the worry of performing, mm -hmm. performing, performance anxiety, you For know, sure. like, cause damn, I don't want everybody to keep thinking people <clears throat> pay me all this money. You know, I could imagine what the Cowboys are going through. <laughs> yeah. All right. You paid what half a billion? Well, <laughs> and you guys got worse since y'all got paid. <laughs> this is some of the, hey, but again, <laughs> this is one of them things, man. We're not in their shoes, so you never know what they mm -hmm. got going on mentally. But hey, if y'all enjoyed this video, you already know what to do. Make sure you want those likes, subscribe. Sure. Let us know if y'all want us to check out part two. But never forget to continue to spread love, be love always, and keep God first. Catch you in the next one. Peace. Peace. <laughs> If you got a problem, then we got the solutions And there's no illusion I made this shit happen, I'm living life lucid I'm switching my strategies Now they hate on me cause I'm causing casualties So why are they after me? Deep inside they know they can't handle half of me